lessons can you actions on her and get in touch with the next one? Yeah, I want to Hello. Hello, everyone. Could you believe this weather? <laughs> okay, I didn't order the sun dog, but I'm very happy it's in the sky as we have rainbows here in Provincetown. And this is a very unusual thing happening up here. So I just wanted to, um, anyway, welcome. Thank you so much for being here. Um, I want to thank the Board of Selectmen, and um, we have Cheryl Andrews, Tom Donegan, Louise Venden, Bobby Anthony, um, Lise King, and I believe Mary Jo Avalar, our town moderator. There she is. And our town, um, our town manager. So welcome, my name is Sherry Mittenthal, and I am the past chair in, of the Cult Cultural Council and a current member of the Province Sound Cultural Council. I'm the executive artistic director of Truro Center for the Arts at Castle Hill. And I'm honored to be here as part of the unveiling of this important monument for the town of Provincetown. I came to town over 15 years to take this job at Castle Hill and I joined the Provincetown Cultural Council. There had already been conversations about doing a $5,000 plaque to remember people living with AIDS. Over time, the Cultural Council wanted to do more. We committed to raising more money. We needed to find a suitable site. The committee looked at every single town-owned land. We took photos. We came up with the pros and cons of every public space in town. And in the end, we really wanted this memorial to be right here in Town Hall, right next to the War World War I and the World War II monuments right here at Town Hall. And the Cultural Council wouldn't take anything less. So thank you. <laughs> the eight-member council, which operates under the Massachusetts Cultural Council program, spearheaded, the, spearheaded this project over the last 16 years made up of the bulk of select and also the bulk of the selection committee, along with representatives from the aid support group of Cape Cod and the Province Sound Arts Commission, as well as the town manager. I also want to say a big shout out to our past chair, Robert Spicer, who has helped us get to this point. He's worked Yes, there he is. There he is. He's worked, he worked with the town, he worked with the engineers, he worked with the artists, he worked with everything, and we're very excited about that. And he's moving out of town next week, so we want to wish him the best, and the town is going to miss him very much. The Cultural T Council Committee consisted, consists of Chris Busa, Francine D'Olimpio, Brian O'Malley, Dawn Walsh, Ray Wiggs, Don German, and our very good friend, Judy Cicero, who passed away this past February. She sat on this committee with us for nine years, and she's with us in spirit, and she's very, very pleased at as how this turned out. So here's to Judy. Provincetown was the first town in the country. Sorry. To Judy. That's <laughs> right. Provincetown was the first town in the country to step up to the AIDS crisis. People came here to die, they came here to feel safe, they came here to feel accepted, they came here to feel community. For people were, who were living here at the time, it was awful to see the loss, but it was also amazing to see the community come together. The caregivers, the women who took care of the men, the men who took care of each other, the buddies, the support groups, the food delivery, the drivers to Boston, the restaurants who fed people, the fundraisers, Provincetown is that community, and we're so excited to have this AIDS memorial in this town. In choosing the ocean as her inspirational metaphor, the artist Lauren Ewing wanted to create something that belonged to everyone. After a nationwide search, the selection committee unanimously chose her design for Provincetown long sought AIDS memorial. So here's to Lauren Ewing. So we have a long program, so I'm not going to be much longer, but I just wanted to say that um, we've all been here on this journey, and um, we're very excited, and we're very happy to have you all be here. Our next speaker is going to be David Panagor, our town manager. Please welcome David.
good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm honored to be asked to deliver remarks today, along with others, so I'll try endeavor to be brief. I was asked as town manager, but it's as a member of this community. It is as a 50-something-year-old gay man that I stand before you. I admit I'm a bit daunted. To start with, as you see, I'm reading from notes, and I never read from notes. I'm daunted at the task of speaking on something this important in our lives, in our community, and important for what we say to the world beyond with every visitor every day in the years that lie ahead. We are saying this matters, that everyone here and everyone who come here, that the pain, their pain, the sacrifice, the memory, our living in our dead matter. This day has meaning. This sculpture has amazing meaning. Provincetown has a founding idea, I've heard said, to be a safe harbor. This installation as well is another reminder, another instance, when Provincetown fulfills that promise. As painful as the memory, as challenging as AIDS remains, living up to that promise is something for us to celebrate. So on behalf of town staff, we are proud to have been able to do our part and let me share some thanks. Thanks to town staff who over the years and in recent days have helped to bring this installation about. As well, a loving, hugging thank you to the donors and the members of the Cultural Council, past and present, who even in my short time here have seen leading, caring like expectant parents, shepherding in every way this effort along. Thank you. As town manager, I had a front row seat on the selection of the work and on Lauren Ewing as the artist. But it is a, as a community member that I want to thank the selection committee for the care, the intelligence, and the heart they brought to bear. We all bring to art our own experience, which creates our own response. My memory and perspective, like everyone else's, is personal. Someone far wiser than me told me, when viewing art, just ask yourself over and over, what do you see? What do you see? What do I see? I see the dark weight of memory under a storm-tossed sea. I see current burden and a nearly impenetrable fixture that cannot be moved or forgotten that calls out to each of us with meaning. I see a time 25 years ago when Michael Klein gave me the first roof ever over my head in Provincetown and welcomed me in. When I first heard the power of his poetry. Thank you, Michael. And most of all, over the last few weeks, as I've come and gone to Town Hall, I've seen Lauren Ewing out here working, not mechanically, but personally, intimately, and with meaning. I saw firsthand her commitment and connection to her art, this art. Thank you so much. Each of us here has a personal relation, a personal history in some way or another with AIDS. And as I thought about the pain the sacrifice and this dedication, this consecration of memory today. I was reminded of some words delivered about 150 years ago by then President Lincoln. That may be a memorial dedication you all have heard of. And I may paraphrase a bit as I conclude with his words that still ring true from a different time for a different battle. Now this memorial will live on amazing, unyielding, demanding, to be seen and be heard. But as Lincoln said, in a larger sense, we cannot dedicate, we cannot consecrate, we cannot hollow this Provincetown ground. The brave men and women, living and dead, who struggled here, have consecrated it. Far beyond our poor power to add or detract, the world will little note no long remember what we say here today, June 16th, 2018. But we can never forget what they did here. It is for us, the living rather, to be dedicated here in the shadow of this memorial, in the shadow of AIDS, to the unfinished work and the great task that lies before us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, David.
Our next speaker is Brian O'Malley. Brian has been on the Cultural Council since 2011, but more importantly, he sails a cat boat and has been the doctor in town for the past 41 years. Here's Brian O'Malley. It was an early summer day in 1981, almost 37 years ago. And it was a day that was going to change both of our lives profoundly. His name was Jacques. He worked at a club in town. And he'd been feeling rather poorly for a little while. I knew that his blood counts were strange. But even the specialists couldn't tell us what was wrong with Jacques. He called that particular day with a very irritating cough. And he went and got a chest x-ray. What I saw matched the pattern of a pneumonia that had been associated with a just described Im new immunodeficiency syndrome in gay men. Suddenly, the blood disorder made all kinds of sense. Despite immediate hospitalization, he was dead within days. And my life as a frontline physician in the AIDS epidemic recognized first that day here in Provincetown would never be the same. There'd be many, many more like Jacques, quite healthy until suddenly they weren't. And while the illness sooner or later always became perfectly evident, even to strangers still, it was a great mystery. Its transmission was unclear. Its diagnosis was mostly one of exclusion with no certain markers and a diversity of manifestations. Therapy was mostly supportive, meaning no specific disease treatment was known. It was years that the community endured this parade of suffering and decline, repeated until it almost no longer shocked. But this community was anything but a passive spectator as it made Provincetown a welcoming home and health spa so many came to this place, came to call this place home. Help came as rooms, as meals, as rides to medical appointments. Help came as massages and yoga sessions, as assistance dealing with the bureaucracy, as spiritual guidance, as, and, and simply as a comforting presence at the end. I was proud back then to be a part of this community when the AIDS crisis raged. And I am proud to still be a part of it as we today commemorate what brotherly and sisterly spirit and love can do to maintain and heal. This monument is the remembering of our community's courageous and loving response to that fearful time. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Brian. Our next speaker is our friend Joe Carlio, who's the executive director of the AIDS Support Group of Cape Cod. Thank you. It's an honor to be here today representing the AIDS Support Group of Cape Cod, uh, originally the Provincetown AIDS Support Group. This year marks the 35th year of the support group providing services to pe people living with HIV and AIDS in Provincetown and on Cape Cod. This event today is the culmination of the hard work of so many people for many years to bring this beautiful memorial to Provincetown, its permanent home. On January 4th, 2018, this beautiful town hall of ours was surrounded by water, as was much of the town. When the waters recede, if it happens again, this will still be here. At the AIDS Support Group, we have something called the Great Book. 
It's a recording of the many members of this community that we have lost through the AIDS epidemic. It doesn't include everybody, but it has a lot of names, and it's recorded by year. So I'm just going to read a little bit from the great book. The first entry, Jacques Y. Nomond, 1983, one person lost. 1984, John M. Thomas, one person lost. Then we jump ahead a few years, just in our little town, our town. 1988, 15 people lost. 1990, 22 people lost. 1993, 40 people lost. 1994, 41 people lost. And every year in between, each year, there are lists of names of our friends, colleagues, family members lost to this epidemic. There are 376 names in our great book. And we know that there are others we lost whose names didn't make it into the book. However, every one of them was taken care of by this community. There are no names on this memorial because the epidemic is not over. In the past 12 months, six ASGCC clients have died as a result of their HIV disease. And our community continues to support the clients we serve every single day with food, with rides, with everything you've heard already, we're still doing it because the epidemic is not over. This memorial is a memorial of a time when a little seaside town responded to an unthinkable epidemic in an extraordinary manner by coming together, sharing our love, our time, our grief, and our compassion. This is a solid piece of stone with its waves on top and it will stand strong as a reminder not only of those we have lost, but as a reminder of just how strong and giving this town can be and is. So thank you, Provincetown, and thank you for listening to me today. I love you. Thank you, Joe. Our next speaker is an activist and artist, Jay Critchley, a longtime Provincetown resident. He, ut he utilizes the town, landscape, harbor, beaches, and dunes as his medium. Jay's social practice includes running the Provincetown Community Compact and works as an artist with an environmentalist and his biggest feat is the amazing event, the Province Sound Harbor Swim for Life and Paddle Flotilla, fundraiser for AIDS and women, women's health. Please welcome. Thank you very much for the honor to be here. Um, I just returned from Orlando, Florida where the second anniversary of the Pulse nightclub massacre was being commemorated. The compact was invited to install a special strand of prayer ribbons for those who were murdered that day. All 49 victims are, are on this strand of prayer ribbons. And in Orlando, they call them angels. Incidentally, Florida has the highest incidence of HIV in the country. Although different in time and nature, we share tragedies that touch the soul of both of our communities. And our communities responded with action. Our aggressive response to a haunting pandemic is a story the world needs to hear. And it is an evolving story, made more necessary by the anti-gay misogynist and racist attacks on our American values, on our safety, and our dignity. We are in the land of the living. This is a living memorial. Listen to the voices from the graves, from marginalized people who came to the shores of a sanctuary inhabited by the Wampanoag Nation. Whether Yankee whalers or Portuguese fishermen, moon cussers, pirates, women and activists and artists, actors and playwrights, hippies, immigrants, and yes, odd folk. <laughs> but there is a stigma and there is still hate. Provincetown is a global crossroads. Let's continue to share and broadcast our vision of love and hope to our visitors and to the world. It's been hard living, but I'm not afraid to die, cause I don't know what's up there beyond the sky. 
It's been a long, long time coming, but I know change gonna come. Oh, yes it will. There have been times that I thought that I couldn't last for long, but now I think I can carry on. It's been a long, long time coming, but I know change gonna come. Oh, yes it will. Thank you, Jay. Um, our next speaker um, couldn't be here today. It's not in the program, but Mary Marion Roth broke her leg, and her partner Mary DeAngelis um, is going to be reading something that she spoke um, that she wrote today. And um, she was here during the '70s, '80s, and '90s. Marion was also the chair when I came on the board of the Cultural Council. And so, please welcome Mary DeAngelis, our artist, fashionista. <laughs> Thank you. So you'll see me and hear me, but think Marion. I'm going to speak from the um, first person. I'll just give that a second. <laughs> and monumental piece of public art represents everything that is Provincetown to me. Friendship, love, art, endurance, the temporal ocean that holds us, the strength of rock. Fifteen years ago when we at the Provincetown Cultural Council began a process of trying to put art in public places, we never imagined that it would culminate culminate in something as profound and beautiful as this memorial to those who died, to those who sheltered and loved all of the people with AIDS, and to its survivors who can come here to be honored and remember. I was here when AIDS hit us. I came here as an artist, a lesbian with only a passing acquaintance with gay men. I began to meet loving men, artists like Pasquale Natali, gallerists like Sam Hardison, hairdressers like Jimmy Ram. My world began to have men in it, and then came AIDS. One of the great ironies of this crisis was the way in which my life and those of so many other women in Provincetown expanded from our small shells into a giant circle. I met and fell in love with so many men, bonds created on the van rides to the hospitals in Boston, in meals we cooked for strangers, in the People with AIDS Coalition, in the PASG, and in demos for new treatments at Outer Cape Health. I made so many deep friendships and then I lost them. In the process, we became a quiet army of women bound to men by an unbreakable bond of love. I am so proud of us. Thank you. Thank you, Mary. Pasquale Natale person living with AIDS, past member of the Provincetown Cultural Council. Pasquale is an artist, he's a printmaker, he's a sculptor, he's a curator. He won an Unsung Hero Award by the AIDS Action Committee in Boston in 1990. He was the first organizer of the auction for the Provincetown AIDS Support Group, which raised $230,000. We are so happy he's here today. Please welcome Pasquale.
public art in public places. Over 15 years ago at a cultural council meeting that I was a member of, the idea of an AIDS memorial for the town of Provincetown was born. It has been a long and winding road with many obstacles along the way. But thanks to the perseverance and hard work of several incarnations with different members at different times of the Provincetown Cultural Council, that idea is now this amazing reality. I would like to thank all of you who made this happen. Also, thank you, Lauren Ewing. I love this piece of art. I am moved when I look at it, especially when I touch it. It's so soft. It is dark and it is soft. It swells and then it soothes. It is of the time, then and now and sits beautifully in harmony with the other town memorials close by. Lauren, please accept my gratitude and love for what you have given all of us here in this extraordinary place we call home. We're very excited to have Michael Klein, who's a poet, um, and he has, um, with Marie Howe, curated the poetry, which is along the side facing the water. Um, Michael Klein is a poet, a writer who has written four books of poems, a memoir, a book of essays, and a chapbook of, pro of prose poems. He also edited three anthologies, which all face in one way or another the AIDS pandemic. He and Marie Howe curated the line of poems on the side, again, of the AIDS Memorial. Please welcome Michael Klein. Thank you. Um, I was almost late. I was late, actually. And I found Lauren immediately. I, didn't, I don't usually go this way. I usually come from that way. I'm going to read a poem by Joan Larkin. Inventory. The sun usually lets me see, but not today. One who lifted his arms with joy, first time across the finish line of the New York Marathon. Six months later, a skeleton falling from threshold to threshold, shit streaming from his diaper. One who walked with a stick, wore a well-cut suit to the opera, to poetry readings, to mass, who wrote the best long poem of his life at Roosevelt Hospital and read it on television. One who went to 35 funerals in 12 months, one who said, I'm sick of all you AIDS widows. One who lost both her sisters. One who said, I'm not sure that what he and I do is safe, but we're young. I don't think we'll get sick. One who said, they came for me in their boat. They want me on it, and I told them not tonight. I'm staying here with James. One who went to Mexico for Leotril. One who went to California for Compound Q. One who went to Germany for extract of Venus flytrap. One who went to France for humane treatment. One who chanted holding hands in a circle. One who ate vegetables, who looked in a mirror and said, I forgive you. One who refused to see his mother. One who refused to let speak to his brother, one who refused to let a priest enter his room, one who did the best paintings of his life and went home from his opening in a taxi with 20 kinds of flowers, one who moved to San Francisco and lived two more years, one who married his lover and died the next day, one who said, I'm entirely filled with anger, one who said, I don't have AIDS. I have something else. One with night sweats, nausea, fever. One who worked as a nurse. One who kept on studying to be a priest. One who kept on photographing famous women. One who kept on writing vicious reviews. One who kept going to AA meetings till he couldn't walk. 
One whose son came home just once, whose son came just once to the hospital. One whose mother said, this is God's judgment. One whose father held him when he was frightened. One whose minister said, Beth and her lover of 12 years were devoted as Ruth and Naomi. One whose clothes were thrown in the street, beautiful shirts and ties, a neighbor picked from the garbage and handed out at a party. One who said, this room is a fucking prison. One who said, they're so nice to me here. One who cut my hair and said, my legs don't bother me. One who couldn't stand who said, I like those earrings. One with a tube in his chest who asked, what are you eating? One who said, how's your writing? Are you moving to the mountains? Who said, I hope you get rich. One who said, death is transition. One who is doing new work, entirely filled with anger. One who wanted to live till his birthday and did. Thank you, Michael. Our next guest is the artist who created this piece. Laura Ewing, Lauren Ewing is a sculptor and installation artist who also creates drawings, prints, and photographs. Her art addresses the vast construct of material, culture, in relation to memory, desire, and language. Many of her sculptures and installations are polyvocal, simultaneously using image, objects, space, and unique electronic texts that are thematically provocative and richly poetic. She is exhibited nationally and internationally. Her work is in many private and public collections, including the Metropolitan Museum, New York City, the Museum of Modern Art. Her public sculptures are located in many American cities, including Seattle, Sacramento, Atlantic City, Denver, Philadelphia. She currently has a studio in New York City, Indiana, and Provincetown. We're very excited to have this beautiful piece of art in Provincetown. Please welcome Laura Ewing. coming. Um, I want to thank in order of magnitude the citizens of the city of Provincetown whose humanitarian compassion should be an example to the world. I want to thank the Cultural Council who stuck with their guns, so to speak, and for 15 years um, continued to work on the idea of having an AIDS memorial here and then proceeded to raise the money and work with me throughout the last two years in order to bring this here. Um, I want to thank some individuals without whom this could not have been done. Um, my friend and assistant Dawn Zimelis, who lives here in Provincetown, she, she made uh, with me all the three-dimensional files that carved the top of the piece. It's carved like a, a, a map. It's done as a topographic map and then refined and refined. And she made all the files and I couldn't have done it without her. I want to thank Robert Spicer who worked with me uh, almost daily for the last 18 months, who was always present. He was always respons responsive. He was always rational and he was always supportive and I thank him deeply. I want to thank the um, town manager, David Panagori. I want to thank Rich Waldo, who uh, designed the foundations for us. Um, I want to thank Brian O'Malley, who made contact with Mike Winkler, who gave us crane services that brought the stones here. The, uh, the total weight is uh, 40,000 pounds, so it was quite a, uh, uh, a job to get them here from Italy and then to install them on, on the lawn. So all of those people, thank you very, very much. I 
I wanted to make something beautiful and enduring for Provincetown. I wanted to sculpt a unique ocean moment, a moment that is beautiful and transitory and unique like every human life. It was a simple idea. It was very hard to do. <laughs> um, so here it is. And what, what I would like most of all is for you um, at the end of this uh, presentation to just come and talk with me, ask me questions. Um, the process was fascinating. The material uh, started out uh, in a mountainside in Brazil. It was uh, purchased in Carrara, Italy at a stone yard. It was sculpted uh, by computer numerically controlled stone milling machines in the mountains of Tuscany. It was transported down to a marina. It was put in a container. It spent 23 days on the Atlantic Ocean. It landed in Elizabeth, New Jersey. It was picked up again by another crane put onto a tractor trailer bed, was brought to North Truro, where we, Mike Winkler used his cranes. We brought it, put it on another truck, we brought it here. We have pictures of it flying through the air. It's just <laughs> absolutely fabulous. Um, I thank everybody that worked with me. This is a uh, this is a production. It's the work of the coordination of many, many, many people. Um, and thank you for sending me on this journey. It was fantastic. Thank you so much, Lauren. Um, before we go to our last um, speaker, we wanted to just make a note to thank all the people who have served on the Province Agricultural Council since 2003. Dorothy Anastek, Melanie Braverman, Patty DeLuca, Marion Roth, Mike Wright, Greg Anton, Mary Alice Johnston, Pasquale Natali, Diane Shumway, Daniel Kells, Amy O'Hara, Frank Vassello, Cindy Walker, Molly Hamilton, Denny Camino, Richard Olson, Grace Ryder O'Malley, Judith Cicero, Christopher Moore, Tina Trudell, Mer Brian O'Malley, Robert Spicer, Francine DeLimpio, Bregan Thomas, Donald Whitcomb, and Chris Busa. So thank you all for all the years that we've worked on this. I also just wanted to thank um, a few things that, you know, just kind of happened to make this thing happen in the last, you know, 15, 16 years. To WA, remember WA? They threw our first kickoff party right there at their, at their location down the road. Um, a big thanks to Rick Murray who um, supported his door um, at the pool party on July 4th, two years in a row. To the VSB, to the PBG and the Boston Gay Men's Health Chorus and Holly Folly. To Dan Mullins who threw a good party for us. To Judy Cicero who raised money from all the porn stars at the Crown and especially to Laura Ewing. Thank you so much. And please welcome Tom Donegan, our Vice Chair of the Board of Selectmen. Um, he's gonna read a proclamation, and this day is called the Day of Remembering Provincetown Response to AIDS, June 16th, 2018. Thank you. First, um, thank you all for being here, and uh, a bit of a personal comment to begin. I wanna first thank uh, my colleagues on the board of what was then the Board of Selectmen, they took a vote in 2013 to put it here. It was a controversial vote at the time. The day after, it seemed like perfectly right. And um, it was through that leadership that we have it here, that it sits amongst the other memorials in town, and I'm proud to have been part of that effort. I also want to thank the Cultural Council. It's been, they've been thanked so far already, but I think it takes someone from the Board of Selectmen to understand how hard it is to get anything done in Provincetown and how hard it is that they worked. And can we give them a round of applause again? I, re I remember a meeting with uh, Brian and Grace and Judy describing the process for uh, soliciting artists. And it was mind boggling in detail and planning and effectiveness. The artists that we received, Lauren Union, world renowned and quite honored to have your work here on the lawn of Town Hall. And finally, on a personal note, I want to thank all of those people who have responded to this crisis in 1981 until this morning. Our response is heroic, and I want to thank you all on behalf of the town of Provincetown.
the board of select the select board uh, earlier today made this proclamation whereas the epidemic of acquired immune deficiency syndrome aids was first recognized in 1981 and hit provincetown especially hard and whereas provincetown historically has had a large gay population attracted by the diversity and tolerance of this community and whereas many individuals who were ill with aids it did not feel safe or welcome in their own home communities at the exact time when they needed the love compassion and care they came to provincetown to live out their lives surrounded by a loving caring and loving caring community and with aids newly described and clearly communicable infectious disease there was a fundamental lack of solid scientific knowledge about modes of transmission, diagnosis, and treatment. And whereas, despite the fear of contagion and many unknowns about AIDS at the time, the residents of Provincetown provided housing, food, personal and health care, social support to many community newcomers and long-term residents who were ill. And whereas the Provincetown Cultural Council contracted with artist Laura Yun, Lauren Ewing to design and construct a fitting memorial to honor and remember the many dear friends we lost and to honor and remember the time when our town stood tall as an example to the world on how to treat our brothers and sisters with love, compassion, and respect. Whereas the Provincetown AIDS Memorial was the work of many, many people over more than 14 years, people who advocated explored site possibilities, raised the funding, drove the process to design a public artwork commemorating the toleration and welcome display by the community overall and in remembrance of all those who have passed. Now, therefore, in recognition of those who have suffered, those who have cared for those who suffered, those tireless efforts have brought the Promised Town AIDS Memorial to this site on the lawn of Town Hall the select board of the town of Provincetown in the county of Barnstable of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts do hereby proclaim Saturday, June 16th as Day of Remembering Provincetown Response to AIDS. The Honorable Board. Thank you all and to our colleagues. Thank you so much. Um, we'd like to thank Way Downtown who provided some detailed, delicious desserts and um, savory things to the right here. Um, and so please help yourself and come down and touch this monument. Thank you so much for being here. <laughs>